Hi, I'm Tim Zacharias with Cougar USA and your host of Building Value. My guest today is Troy Byers, president of the uh, Byers and Associates, as well as AABC Commissioning Group, or ACG. So, Troy, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Tim. Awesome. Well, really excited about today's episode. We're going to be talking about commissioning and the role of a commissioning agent, as well as the ACG and what it offers its members, and the upcoming CX Energy uh, conference that is next month in April in Orlando. On Building Value, we go behind the scenes of building operations to showcase the people and products that make buildings work and the value they bring to the community. Okay, well, can you tell me about where you grew up? Sure, I grew up in the uh, metro Atlanta area, um, in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay. Um, nice. And what did you do yeah, after high school? Uh, after high school, uh, joined the Navy, Navy Nuclear Power Program. Oh, wow. Um, learned a lot of mechanical theory, which uh, served me well in, in, uh, in my career. That's uh, very cool. I served six years active duty in the Navy on Navy submarines, nuclear subs, and and then uh, and then got into the field of test adjust and balance of HVAC systems, and then later commissioning of HVAC systems. Wow! Thank you for your service. That's that's really cool. Uh, you probably saw a lot of a lot of cool things on the uh, the nuclear subs. I mean, I'm, all kinds of other questions that I wanted to ask you, but it'd probably get us too far off topic. But uh, very, very yeah. interesting. <laughs> so uh, I'm curious, how did that, and, and I, I've talked to a lot of guy, a lot of people on the podcast where they've had um, kind of military service and then transitioned into the kind of HVAC mechanical built environment. I'm just curious how you felt like that, um, that experience helped you in, in, this, in this career path. It helped me tremendously because in the Navy Nuclear Power Program, the training is very intense and it's a uh, it's application oriented in the mechanical theory uh, with heat transfer and fluid flow and um, physics, the mathematics, chemistry, <laughs> just yeah, a little bit of everything. Gamut. Sounds like yeah, a little bit of everything and very strong in the mechanical theory. And so uh, when you when you transition over into HVAC systems and look at uh, the operation of these systems and the the theory behind it to understand how to optimize these systems, you really need to rely on the understanding of fan laws. So when we increase RPM of a fan, that directly relates to the output or the mm -hmm. airflow of the fan. And then what happens with the pressures within the duct system uh, and how they, how they change uh, in, a, in a proportion to that. And then, and then the power consumption. Right. And so, that just takes you from testing, adjusting, and balancing to energy management to commissioning of those systems, and and so that military training that that, that I received and and, and practiced um, directly correlated and was able to transition directly into the field of HVAC and test, adjust, and balance. That's really cool, and I you know I'm not as well versed on the air side of the building, but I think it's a very similar. Uh, you know, kind of relationship on the on the water side, uh, so I can appreciate that that whole system knowledge and how it how it impacts what you do with the different systems. Um, but that, that's a really interesting background. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that's interesting. You bring up the water suit. So actually, it's the water side that we focused on in the Navy. Oh, um, really? Cool. So, yeah. Well, you know, that makes sense. The, uh, yeah. You take the steam plant, and and so you know you bring off steam, whether you generate that steam from a boiler or from a reactor. Mm -hmm. You still utilize that steam on the on the secondary side of the plant to to turn turbines, you right. know, create electricity and propulsion, and then capture, you know, the condensate, right. pump it back use. through, sure. generate, you know, uh, and so the uh, pump pump curves were more familiar to me than fan curves. <laughs> um, but then when I got into test adjust and balance, there's a whole lot more fan curves to look at than pump curves. Sure. A lot more air side balancing to be done. But uh, but they just translate, you know, very easily. 
That's really cool. So you know, it sounds like you know you've been in this industry for for a few years and and you know have now started your own firm. Can you talk a little bit about about that company and and what you do today? So what I'm doing today is just uh, bringing to the table all of the background and experience that I've gained over the years and in engineering, test adjust and balance, uh, commissioning of systems. And I have a consulting engineering firm that, that is uh, providing, you know, that service to building owners and contractor teams. Um, and I, and I enjoy, uh, the, I guess, um, investigating building issues, yep. uh, system issues, trying to determine you know, do we have an installation problem or a design problem? What's what's preventing this system from performing to its design capacity? Sure. And, you know, utilizing manufacturer's literature uh, and uh, contract documents and then actual being on site and, and, and looking and, and observing, testing uh, to determine what could be done to optimize the system or to correct a deficiency? Sure, and I, that's you know we do that on a on a much smaller scale with a lot of the equipment that we do you know on, in the aftermarket, kind of trying to troubleshoot some issues. But that problem solving aspect to to the job is a lot of fun, and even though it's similar equipment and and similar type buildings, there's always new issues that you can find or new reasons why systems aren't working. So it's uh, it's a fun part of the job for sure. I love the that problem solving aspect to the job. I mean, we, we work with a lot of existing buildings and uh, do some troubleshooting and, and uh, testing on some of the systems that we provide and, and help support. And so I just, even though it's the same equipment or the same type of building, there's always new things that kind of pop up or nuances with little systems. So there's always a fun kind of problem, sol problem solving aspect to it. Sure. As, you know, and, and, you know, the application is everything. So, you know, that's what makes every job different um, because we're using the same yep. type of equipment, but a different application, different environment. And uh, that's what I find very interesting about the industry that we work in. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, there's that tangible benefit to what you're doing, right? Like you, you can walk away knowing that you help solve this problem and then ultimately, you know, improve the built environment for, you know, the hospital or office building school, whatever it is, you know, and improve that experience for the patients, tenants, and guests. Absolutely. And, and we've, you know, certainly gained, uh, gained some significance during the, the pandemic and, uh, you know, awareness of filtration oh, yeah. and, and, you know, air changes and, you know, building pressurization, building flush outs, things like that uh, have really come to the forefront, uh, you know, lately. Yeah, I completely agree. I feel like people are definitely more aware of the kind of the building that they're in or the air quality, the water quality, things like this. I think that, you know, people in the industry that these professionals have been talking about for a long time, that these things are important and that uh, we should be paying attention to them now. I think everybody's just a little bit more aware. Absolutely. So, you know, you mentioned the industry that we're in and I, you've, you've kind of had some involvement at a bigger level in this industry than, than outside of your, your company directly. Can you talk about AABC and, and your involvement there? Sure. So the AABC is the Associated Air Balance Council, and uh, that's an independent third party testing, adjusting, and balancing firms. Uh, certification of the technicians as well as the test and balance engineers to provide certified testing, adjusting, balancing services. From that, the ABC commissioning group was formed in 2004. So that's the ACG, and we have an acronym within our acronym there. <laughs> yes. Um, and initially, you know, the focus was HVAC commissioning. Um, today, you know, the ACG um, is, as you'll see as we talk about our commissioning guideline that's, that's being rolled out this year, has the, the commissioning focus and, uh, and scope has grown to include all building systems and building enclosures, electrical systems, uh, much more diverse group of commissioning providers today than we had when ACG was first formed. 
But ACG sure. follows the same principles with ACG, ABC. So the two organizations follow the same principles of uh, independent third party certification. So the, the member firms have no other uh, uh, interest in installation or, you know, providing products. So we have an independent third party, uh, unbiased, you know, approach to the reporting and testing that is being provided. Also within ACG, you have the EMA, which is the energy management side. And so right. we, we have three organizations that, that collectively uh, we, we see as the leaders in building performance, ACG, ABC, and EMA. Okay. Yeah, and I, I would agree. I mean, there's a lot more that goes on with commissioning than just the HVAC system. And so that's a lot of uh, knowledge that you would have to have as a commissioning agent to kind of cross all of those different um, kind of disciplines and things like that. So how, how is it that, you know, either through your own experience or with that, um, you know, through this industry group that, that, that you help cover all of that? What we typically see is, is organizations will focus in, in one discipline, so either mechanical or electrical. Um, they may also have you know, a division that performs you know, building envelope, or you may have, um, let's say, a design firm, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, that could cover multiple disciplines. Um, but it would, it would certainly have departments within that organization that focus specifically on, you know, electrical or focus specifically on mechanical or building envelope, whatever the, you know, the, the specialty is there. Um, because it, it does require um, many years of experience to, sure. to get to, you know, to get to the expertise and proficiency to perform the commissioning of the systems. So um, just like practicing engineering, uh, you're gonna you're gonna find a discipline specific engineer um, for for each for each uh, area. Gotcha. Okay. And and ultimately the the goal of the commissioning, like you said, is kind of be that independent third party to to verify that what got installed is is performing to the specs and you know kind of looking out for the owner, making sure they're getting what they paid for, right? Exactly. So, you know, from to add value, uh, you know, commissioning needs to be incorporated early on in a project so that, you know, when the basis of design is, is produced, you know, it's compared to the owner's project requirements early on to see if everyone's, you know, speaking the same language and, you know, in the right, in the same climate zone and, and there aren't any sure. obvious, uh, you know, miscommunications or, just an error that could be carried forward from the initial narrative. Um, moving forward, you know, looking at specifications and, and drawings early in design phase to, to just um, have a second set of eyes and look for any conflicts. Um, early on, it could be a coordination issue between mechanical and electrical um, as far as you know, a selected uh, power requirement for a piece of equipment. Sure. Um, and, and so to add the value, the commissioning agent, you know, should be involved early on looking at, looking at, the, uh, looking at the design documents um, and then moving forward in, through installation, um, participating on site uh, to, to uh, observe, make observations and, and, and perform installation verification checks, um, you know, that's where a commissioning provider can identify issues well in advance of functional testing. So, sure. you know, when we say ready for commissioning, that sometimes uh, means ready for functional testing, uh, but really commissioning starts early on in, in, in the process in the project. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the ultimate goal is to, uh, certainly document and, and functionally test each piece of equipment, run it through all of the sequences that's designed to, to perform under. And, uh, 
And if we can, if we can achieve that without a lot of failures, um, that means that the commissioning providers done a very good job of, you know, throughout the project of trying to identify issues that could, that could preclude that, uh, and, and really come to an efficient close to the project, um, by even testing everything that, that, uh, that we've really put our hands on throughout, throughout the whole project. Right. Yeah. And we've had plenty of experience working with commissioning agents on the equipment that we provide, uh, making sure, like you said, that they meet all the functional requirements, the alarms are working, communication with the BAS, all of those things are going smoothly so that when you do get to that kind of, uh, that handover to the building or they, you know, the, their turnover the job, then everything is working like it should. Exactly. So, I'm, you know, I'm curious, is there, is there anything that you feel like um, might make the process go a little bit smoother or things that you've seen maybe on projects that went really well uh, or maybe projects that didn't go well where something didn't happen like it was supposed to? You know, for, let's say, for the owner or the designer side, like what, is, what are some things that they could do with the commissioning agent to, to kind of help smooth out the process? So from the, from, I think from the owner's perspective, if, if they... Um, if they're, you know, engaged and, uh, you know, tuned in to the dialogue, let's talk about the dialogue between the commissioning agent and the designer. So, you know, the commissioning agent is asking the designer to clarify design intent. You know, oftentimes it's the owner that has the owner's project requirements or design guidelines, that, that, you know, specific sequences, let's, Let's give an example of a sequence that, that an owner may want um, to see for economizer control of an air handler. And um, the owner may have even drafted their own sequence that you know they want to see this particular sequence for all of their air handlers, right. let's say, across a school system. And so the owner may have three or four different design teams engaged in, in, in school design. And so the commissioning provider could question a design engineer on a sequence that's specified by the owner. And, you know, the, the owner should stay engaged, you know, and listen to that dialogue for any clarification. And, you know, there may be a, uh, an instance, there may be an instance where the design guide has been updated and we're, you know, the commissioning providers looking at a, an older version of the design guide. And so very quickly, the owner can inter, interject, you know, and say, yes, we, we see why this is a question from the commissioning provider. But in fact, we've moved away from that design guide. And now we're doing things a different way. We need to update our design guide. Um, because the commissioning provider is just working with the documents that are, that are available. And if, right. uh, if there's been a revision, you know, the owner needs to speak up, but, but that in that instance, only the owner would understand, you know, why we're even bringing this issue up to begin with. Um, so you know, it's like the, the, the more detailed you, you perform the commissioning, you know, the more issues can come up, but if everyone is working together, then we can figure out, you know, what where what is the intent, and uh, for this particular project, and and so I guess the the bottom line is that, uh, you know, that the 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 concept of a commissioning team um, is so important that you know everyone on that team is tuned in and following along and interjecting with their respective uh, in their respective role. Sure. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I feel like, you know, we have good open lines of communication and, and the owner is clear on what they want, that, that projects would go pretty smoothly at, overall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not, not always the case, right? There's a lot of, a lot of gray areas to work through sure. uh, on a lot of projects, but. Sure. Understand. Well, very cool. Well, I'm curious. I'd like to learn a little bit more about the CX Energy Conference that's coming up as well. Can you talk about that conference, just kind of what it is uh, and, and who might want to attend it? 
Yeah, the CX Energy Conference is uh, is is an awesome opportunity for uh, building owners, engineers, commissioning providers, test just and balance uh, engineers and providers. Um, the the conference has grown uh, tremendously over the years. We've got uh, fifty vendors for uh, an exhibit hall, um, all nice. different all different um, types of organizations that will participate in that. Um, we'll have 500 plus attendees. And uh, just as we touched on the three organizations, we'll have presentations on the AABC side for test adjust and balance, on the EMA side for energy uh, performance. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, commissioning of HVAC systems, electrical systems, um, so it's, it's very, very diverse program and, uh, we're very excited to have it in person again this year yep. after a couple of years of not seeing each other. And so, uh, I think the, the energy, uh, you know, level will just be elevated this year, um, for that reason. Absolutely. No pun intended, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So the it's in uh, it's next month, correct? In April. It's next month in April in Orlando, Florida. Um, there will be some pre-conference um, programs for uh, additional training opportunities uh, and certification uh, exams, uh, and then the conference itself will be all day Thursday and half day Friday with technical presentations um, and cxenergy.com is the, the website. Um, there's an app that can be downloaded you know, through the app. As you, as you attend presentations, uh, you can automatically upload your, your certificate of attendance for AIA credit. Uh, makes it very easy oh, nice. to, uh, to track those for uh, professional development hours. And, sure. and have a record of attendance. Um, and then also the app, of course, is just very handy to, to keep up with what's going on and, and where and, and schedule and so forth. Nice. I mean, so it sounds like a good combination of, you know, the technical presentations, you know, getting some PDH hours in, as well as the opportunity to walk the expo floor, see, you said 50 uh, vendor booths. Um, do some networking, things like that. So just a great opportunity for anybody in the industry to get some uh, good educational content, networking, PDH is all in one. Absolutely. There's always plenty of time for the expo hall um, to, to inter engage and, and, and interface with the vendors. Uh, we'll have uh, vendors with products on display for, uh, for example, testing instruments uh, for indoor air quality and, and, and measurement of airflow, temperature, pressure, whatnot. Um, there's always great engagement between the vendors and the practitioners um, looking for ways to, to find uh, uh, better tools, uh, better instruments to, to make the workflow, you know, to accomplish the workflow more efficiently and more precisely. Sure. So that's always fun to, to see what's, what's new in the industry from, from that perspective. Um, from different instrumentation and uh, and uh, products that that could be implemented. Of course, if you're you know software companies with diagnostic tools and and uh, you know controls interfaces that that can be used for you know for testing and and uh, uh, analytical uh, tools like that. So. Um, there's uh, it's it's ever changing you know, every every year there's something new to 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 explore and and uh and so i look forward to that personally to see uh to see what's out there absolutely i mean we're we're seeing the internet of things really catch on in in the commercial building space and so i know that's a very fast moving part of the industry with uh kind of new software options these building optimization uh, platforms, things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, all that plays out. Absolutely. So I'm curious, do you have the, um, what are some of the topics that are going to get covered 
in some of the technical presentations. I just want to maybe pique some interest for any of the building owners or facility managers you know, or commissioning agents, like you said, providers that might be going to this, con or this uh, conference and thinking about it. What are some of the things that they might be able to, to learn about? So from the, from the AABC side, we're going to have a presentation on the fundamentals of test adjust and balance. And, and you know, this, can, this is very practical uh, information that can be used by uh, you know, engineering firms to see you know, that perspective. Uh, also for the commissioning providers to understand uh, some of what happens on the tab side uh, you know, during commissioning and, and how, how, to, uh, how to effectively uh, you know, communicate and work together. So that leads to another topic that's going to be presented um, let me find the exact, it's the uh, controls contractor interface with TAB and commissioning. And so sort sure. of like the conversation we just touched on with the, the communication between the owner and the design team and the commissioning provider, you know, now we're going to shift over to the contractor side of, you know, building this building and making it function the way it's intended. And so you have to get, you know, the controls, TAB and commissioning huge part of that um, and so that's going to be a very good uh, presentation to understand roles and responsibilities you know between all the players and and certainly communication being a, a big part of that um, so that's on the ABC side with on the uh, energy management side we're going to see a presentation um, on efficiency sustainability resiliency and security um, and so that's gonna that's gonna touch on some topics of, uh, of energy management we've got building enclosure sure uh, building enclosure fundamentals for building envelope testing um, on the electrical side we've got a couple of different ones ones on lighting controls presentation on lighting controls as uh, as we look at you know modern control strategies and, and the testing and, and the walkthrough of the commissioning process for lighting controls. Um, so touching on the electrical there. Um, we're also going to see, let me look one up here, just bear with me for a moment. Um, beyond the generator testing, we're actually going to look at the fuel systems behind, you know, ah, okay. secondary to, you know, uh, electrical. So taking a little deeper dive into the emergency power systems um, should be very interesting. Um, you know, everyone shows up for the the electrical testing and uh, you know automatic transfer to electrical, and we just expect that that generator to start running. But there's <laughs> there's further yeah. you know there's further uh, deeper dive into looking at the fuel systems and and best practices for, for design and specifications on those fuel systems. So that, that should be quite interesting as well. So it's very diverse. Absolutely. We, uh, we actually, yeah, yeah, we, we were in the, the critical fuel market there for a while. And so have a lot of experience with the, the pump sets, filtration, distribution to the day tanks and return and all of that. So it's definitely a very complicated system. And as much as we wanted to make them a, a standard, set of products that uh, almost everyone became custom. So can definitely appreciate uh, that it needs a little bit of attention on, on the design side. <laughs> every, every application is different. And then on the commissioning side, we're going to see some case studies, um, which are always, you know, very interesting. Uh, one is on a prison, uh, commissioning of a prison. And, and then we've also got one uh, topic on challenges with cord shell commissioning okay. of, of, typical office building that has the core and shell. So we're trying to commission, you know, large systems that are providing nothing yet. Yeah. There's <laughs> until, nobody until there. The yet. <laughs> there's nothing. Right. You know, we, we can't provide a hundred percent airflow when we've got the duct capped at the mechanical room. Right. Uh, so, you know, I think that would be an interesting uh, discussion as well. Um, we also have representation from ASHRAE, um, and that's going to be uh, presented on um, the Epidemic Task Force. Uh, 
response to building reopening and guidance throughout the pandemic. Um, so the, the three organizations that we've been talking about have signed a memorandum of understanding with ASHRAE uh, to, and we just signed that at the ABC conference recently um, in October. But the idea there is to have more presence, you know, between our organizations and ASHRAE, vice versa. Um, and, and that is in the form of, you know, presentations at conferences, you know, white papers, um, engagement in uh, chapter, you know, let's say ASHRAE chapter meetings, uh, things sure. like that, so that the message is coming, you know, from the practitioners and, and the, you know, and the designers and, and, and interfacing. Uh, uh, between the it makes two. a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, that's good, definitely a great right in our wheelhouse. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really cool. I mean, y'all are covering a lot in this conference, uh, you know, hitting on a lot of the different areas that you mentioned as part of commissioning. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of good takeaways that, that you could have as an attendee to any of those presentations and at the kind of the vendor expo. So it sounds like a great event. Absolutely. I mean, there's so much to learn, you know, from, from attending this conference that, you know, like we were talking about, you know, everyone's got their area of expertise, but, you know, a little bit of cross training helps us all understand, you know, the whole process, the whole, you know, built environment so that, you know, we understand how things are supposed to come together from all angles and, and yep. to just learn others' perspectives uh, really goes a long way when we get out there and start collaborating, you know, as a team in the field and providing our services to building owners. Absolutely. Well, very cool. So is there anything uh, either about the conference or about ACG that, that we haven't covered yet that, that you want to make sure that, that you get out there? Um, let's see. Let's see. So I, I do want to mention that the pre-conference workshops um, will include certification and seminars for certified commissioning authorities, as well as energy management professionals, EMPs. So those okay. pre-conference workshops um, will will not interfere, you know, with the technical sessions that will start uh, the next day. So. Um, good opportunity to have, you know, folks come down and, and gain their, their certification, uh, their at okay. the conference. And again, the, the dates and the location on, on the conference. So our dates are April 19th through the 22nd and it's in Orlando, Florida. Okay. So website, cxenergy.com. Okay. Is it at the convention center or is it? No, it's a, not. It's, um, bear with me just a moment. The name of the resort escapes me <laughs> there's only a couple in orlando so <laughs> they can handle it right we yeah. we were we were at the same location in 2019 um okay the 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 name of the resort is carib royale in orlando okay. florida nice same site yeah, as 2019. I mean, they set up very well for our for our uh, expo hall as well as the sessions, the technical Very nice. sessions. Yeah, Orlando's uh, got a, a lot of great expo space. We've been to the AHR Expo there uh, a couple times. So, you know, just plan a little bit of extra time in and out of the airport with all the uh, Disney travel and, and you'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Well, very cool. Well, uh, Troy, any, any other uh, words of wisdom or advice for anybody in the industry or maybe getting into the industry? What advice would you have for them? So my advice would be to uh, stay tuned for the new commissioning guideline that's coming out. Um, this years in the in the development here, um, we're really moving away from a prescriptive guideline, saying what needs to be done, and uh, talking more to the idea of why we do things the way we do, best practices. Um, so it's it's going to be. Uh, a gold mine of information for folks coming into the industry, folks that have been in the industry, um, to get that collective knowledge base that each contributor to the guideline brings 
uh, from multiple contributors bringing this together uh, with discipline specific topics. Uh, you know, and again, we're leveraging and bringing to the table you know, years of collective experience. And so when you read a section in this new guideline uh, regarding electrical testing or lighting controls or domestic hot water, uh, different, different areas of, of commissioning, um, you're going to get gain some insight into best practice and, and not just a checklist of what to do or what to look for, but why. And uh, I think that's going to be very valuable. Um, Sure, and what that's going to be a topic at the at the CX Energy Conference as well. So, really looking forward to that. That's a pretty exciting uh, uh, moment in our in our organization uh, to to present a new a new guideline that that is comprehensive and and very diverse uh, in in different disciplines of commissioning that that we've been talking about. Now we're going to present that in a in a body of work. Very cool. Yeah, the, the those changes that you talked about in the in the guidelines sound, you know, really good. And, and like you said, going to provide a lot more valuable information than just than just a checklist of of what needs to get done. So great advice there. And we'll make sure to include links to um, the websites where people can find this information and to the uh, expo as well, the the uh, energy conference to make sure that people can find that register. Uh, check out all that information. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to make it out there. I don't know if my son's uh, baseball schedule is going to allow for it, but I'm gonna do my best to uh, to get out there and and uh, see y'all and, and uh, you know hopefully attend some of those educational uh, you know d uh, attend some of those technical presentations that you were talking about. Well, we hope to see you there, Tim. That would, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Well, Troy, again, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, the episode today of Building Value and really appreciate your service uh, in the Navy and uh, you sharing that with us today, sharing you know, your background and kind of how that's played into what you do now with commissioning and um, you know, looking, like I said, looking forward to the CX Energy Conference and all that it brings as well. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate your awesome. time. Awesome. Well, I also want to thank everyone for watching or listening to this episode and we look forward to seeing you on the next one of Building Value.